Entertainment. Chairman. Wow. Come on. Uh, this next icon that I'm going to bring up on stage is blood related. We didn't find that out until a couple of years ago, but it made sense because I always noticed him. He was walking in greatness from the beginning, and I think he personified everything Tupac did as well. When I used to hang out at that same apartment everybody's talking about, I used to sit on the couch and, and hear Pac talk about protecting black women. Um, he talked about financial literacy, even when the mics and cameras were off. That's what he was talking about. And this man has walked in that plight when it comes to business and economy and longevity and being authentic and being a visionary and representing the Bay Area everywhere he go. I see him all over the world and he's representing the Bay Area and he's setting fine examples. And I don't know, I think he would beat money be in a battle. Please welcome the one and only E-40. Come on, man. <laughs> day uh, my man Ray Love had hit me and say man I know you want to say a few words uh, for your guy Pac man and uh, so it was mandatory that I made it here um, I want to say first and foremost when I first I've been new about Pac but I didn't meet Pac until like 92 90 like 92 but the person we in who we at uh, Davis, I think it was Juneteenth or something, and uh, my man Richie Rich, he was there, and he was like, he say we was gonna leave. Oh, double R, double. Okay, there we go. Double R was like, uh, hey, Fody, I gotta give you a Tupac number, man. He wanna, he wanna get in contact with you, and I say, huh, Tupac, like that, right? He said, yeah, he did it. I called Pac. I left a voicemail. He hit, he hit me. I didn't even know it was his number. I didn't trip. I was like, I tripped when he just, he left a voice. He say, yo, 40, word, it's Pac. You know, he had a little bit of New York in him. Word, right? <laughs> so I hit him, man. From then on, it was, we was, come on, man. I mean, I mean, we just talked and we talked about things that a lot of people might not even talk about, man, you know, um, but he was genuine. If he loved, if he liked you, he loved you. If you was on some sucker stuff, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't feeling you because he was too real. He was the realest rapper ever. He was very bright. You understand me? He was, he was a triple threat. Movies, rap, poet, everything. You understand me? Um, you know, made positive music, uh, self-esteem lifting music for females like Dear Mama, uh, you know what I'm saying? Brenda's got a baby. Keep your head up. We can go on and on forever. You know, so all I know is it was always good times. He'd get in the studio. And when we in the studio, he would um he would actually write within like 10 minutes, write his whole verse. I never seen nobody write that quick. We was last time I seen him, we was um in Calabasas at my practice looking hard video. And uh, it was a star-studded event. We was on the trailer, on my trailer. He playing songs that I never heard before. He was just telling me about Machiavelli. I was like, I'm Fonzarelli. He was like, I'm Machiavelli. <laughs> <laughs> he had, he had, a, he had a song. I, I tripped out because I didn't even know I, on that, that that same year, the Hall of Game album. I had a song produced by Mike Mosley, 
and it was called mm-hmm. Things That Never Change. And so I didn't know, I put that out, I didn't know like a year later or a few months later that he, he had to record it around the same time or even before he had the song Changes. Bruce Hornsby, we both sampled it. It's crazy, that's that's the pattern we was on. But the songs that he played for me when he was, you know, he, he told me, and it, it kind of bothered me, I never heard nobody say this before. He said, 40, I got, I got, I got albums that for when I die. He told me that. It sounds regular now, but at that time, it was kind of shocking to me. You know what I mean? But I understood it. And now I know I got albums from when I pass because that's all I do is record. This is our art. We got a passion for rapping. This is what we really do. I really feel in my heart that Tupac is in heaven because he believed in the Lord real heavy. You know what I'm saying? He spoke up for our people, for our culture. You understand me? And he was one of them. He the greatest rapper that ever did it, man. He did so much in so little time. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't want to take up, speaking of time, I don't want to take up everybody's time. But this is a great event. And I know he's looking down and hecka happy, hella happy. So I love y'all. 40 Water out.